What is going on, everybody? It's the front, and we're here for a Royal Rumble review for January the 29th, 2022, from the Dome in America Center in St. Louis, at America Center in St. Louis, Missouri. There was no kickoff match tonight, thankfully, but tonight's show was absolutely one of the worst Royal Rumbles we have seen in the last. This just, from start to finish, outside of Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins, after that match, which was the opener, surprisingly, especially with how the Royal, Men's Royal Rumble went on, what happened, I'm really surprised that this, ma that this match was the first match to kick off. And after this, the show goes all, just continues to go downhill. This show was not a good show. The Women's Rumble sucked. The Men's Rumble sucked. Everything in between fucking and we're going to get into all that here very, very soon. But we start with Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns. This was, honestly, I didn't really care for this match simply because it was Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns. But the way it all started, Roman comes out first, which I wondered, why is Roman coming out first? Champion should always come out second. He did that in the, in the um, WWE title match, but, but, oh my. When Rowan Reigns is standing in the middle of the ring, that familiar music hits. It's not Seth's music. It's the Shields. Seth Rollins, then we see the camera panning around where Seth's going to be at. Seth Rollins is all dressed up in Shield garb. He is coming down like the Shield used to. Comes to the ring, does all the poses. That's a whole nine yards from, top, from the top to the bottom of the Shield. And you can just see Rowan is in the ring. And he's just getting angry, and angrier, and angrier, and angrier. Now, they made a very big point that Roman Reigns, with Paul Heyman with him, has been able to keep a level head, keep himself cool, calm, and collected. But without Roman, without Paul Heyman there, without the Usos there, Roman Reigns had nobody to hold him back. So when I'm going into this, I'm like, there's only one or two things that happen. Roman Reigns wins, or Roman Reigns loses by disqualification. There is no other option of this night that Roman Reigns can lose that championship. You have built this guy up for 516 days. There's no fucking way, no way, no way whatsoever you're going to have this guy lose to Seth Rollins. On this night, it just isn't feasible. It's not going to happen. There's no way it needed to happen. So, this match is basically Seth Rollins is doing everything he can to piss Roman Reigns off. And from the start of the match, because of the whole shield entrance, it kind of got Roman off his game, and Seth Rollins dominated the beginning of this match. And Seth Rollins just seems like he has the upper hand. There might be a chance that he beats, Seth, he beats Roman Reigns. There was even the spot that you saw back in, what was it, I think 2017, 2016, it was 2016, yeah. Because it was when, it's when Seth Rollins won the WWE Championship and then Dean Ambrose won it from him. Where Roman goes for the spear and he catches him into the pedigree. Did not work this time. And Seth is pulling everything out that he can. He's laughing at Roman, he's making, he's just... Taunting Roman, he's pissing Roman off. To when the match comes to an end, Roman Reigns just grabs him and grabs him into the guillotine choke. He just grabs him into the guillotine choke. And he gets him down and Seth is fighting to the ropes. He gets to where you know he can just get his hand out and grab the ropes, but he, his hand falls to the mat. The referee checks him and this pissed me off so much. This pissed me off. There's a referee's Charles Robinson, and he looks like a fucking idiot in this moment. He picks up Seth's arm to check. He doesn't let it go to fall back down. He fucking takes Seth's arm and guides it over so when his arm falls down, he grabs the ropes. This looked so bad. This match was really good. Best match of the night, by the way, by far. But that ending was shit. Because... Roman just holds onto the guillotine. Charles Robinson's like counting. He's like, "Get, let go, let go." His hands on the rope. Let's go, and uh, he counts him one, two, three, four, five, and disqualifies him. And he refuses 
to let go. The fans booed. The fans were pissed. They wanted a winner tonight. You want to know where you get a winner? At the Elimination Chamber in Saudi Arabia. So that's right. You paid all that money to go to this big event, see Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns, and you don't even get a finish. You don't even get a satisfying finish. You get the shit finish because the people in Saudi Arabia are going to get the real finish. Where Roman beats Seth Rollins. Now, he keeps holding on. Eventually, he does finally let go. Big Roman such chant, which we needed to get him. He was getting cheered too much anyway. We needed to get more booze to him. So, he gets, he just gets up slowly. Gets out of the ring. Heads towards the timekeeper area. I don't think, oh, he's just going to get his universal title. No. He grabs a chair. He gets slowly into the ring while Seth Rollins gets up. And we hearken back to 2014 where Seth Rollins took that chair and smacked Roman Reigns in the back, dissolving the shield while Dean Ambrose watched. And in this time, in, in, in reverse, it is Seth Rollins taking the chair shot and the chair shots and the chair shots and the mountain the chair shots. And it's just Roman Reigns beating him within, uh, to a pulp with the chair. And eventually leaves to the back with the Universal Championship. And that was that. This was a really good match. But, yeah. That, that, shit, that finish was shit. It's one thing if he lets go and he fucking sets it on his hand and he like gets that power up and he gets his hand over. That's not what this is. Seth Rollins was out, and Charles Robinson had to make sure that he was able to get his hand on the rope. So he took his hand and pulled it forward so it would fall on the rope so they could have the DQ finish. This looked like shit. Terrible finish to a good match to open the show. Let's talk about the Women's Royal Rumble match. That was our second match of the night. Number one was Sasha Banks. Number two was Melina. Oh yeah, by the way, Sasha Banks loved the outfit. She was dressed as Sailor Moon, but I was thinking, hmm, if she wanted to dress like a sa- one of the Sailor Scouts, why didn't she do the one with the blue hair, which I think is Venus. I can't remember. Anyway, she comes out. She's going up against Melina. Melina lasts 30 seconds. She gets tossed out of the ring. And this is the theme for majority of the women who come back from the, to the Women's Royal Rumble. They're in and they're out in less than 90 seconds. Now, there were some like Mickey, like Michelle, like the, Bree, the Bella Twins, who stayed in the, the ring longer than six, 90 seconds. Michelle McCool, of course, because she's probably going to be the one who has the most time in the Women's Royal Rumble match because she's been in all four or five or whatever, how many they've had. And they always bring her back. So, Lena was eliminated. Out came Tamina. Those two brought for a bit. Number four was Kelly Kelly, which I don't know. I was like, I had to look for him, and I was like, that's really Kelly Kelly? It's not just the hair. It's like, did she have facial reconstruction surgery or something? Because she don't look like Kelly Kelly. Anyway, Kelly Kelly gets eliminated by in like seconds, not too long after she comes out. Aaliyah is out in number five, looking damn good. Just saying. Number six is Liv Morgan. Number seven is Alina Vega. Banks gets eliminated by Vega after Tamina puts her out on the outside. Are you fucking kidding me? This woman should have been the Iron Woman who was there from start to finish and made it to the Final Four. Even if she wasn't going to win, she should have been one of the Final Four. Bad elimination. Number eight was Bianca Belair. Nine, Dana Brooke with a... With um, another music change, which... Really? And Michelle McCool, and then her book gets eliminated not too long after Michelle gets in. Number 11 is Sonya Deville, who looks at everybody, looks like she's going to take her jacket off. It's like, no, I'll go to commentary. Pools of Vince McMahon, only she doesn't win the Rumble. Number 12 is Natalia. Number 13 is, um, I'm sorry, Tamina gets eliminated by Natalia. Number 13 is Cameron, who comes out to... The Funkadactyls music instead of her old go by music that she used to have. Maybe they don't have the rights to it. But she comes in and Byron Saxton or Corey Graves mentions how she is good friends with Naomi. Okay. 
So Cameron gets a move of two in. Sonya Deville comes in and kills her. Eliminates her. And then who would just so happen to be number 14 but Naomi? Because WWE has to be too fucking predictable. They said they did the same exact thing with Sami Zayn and Johnny Knoxville. Which we'll get to that when we get to the Men's Rumble. Which was an absolute waste of our fucking time. Gets eliminated by Naomi. Number 15 is Carmella. Number 16 is Rhea Ripley. Vega and Carmella get eliminated both by Rhea Ripley at the same time. Good on her. Number 17 is um, Charbot 9000. You know how this is going to go. Aaliyah gets eliminated by the Charbot, who was in there for about 25 minutes, I believe is what they said. So good on her for her first Royal Rumble. Naomi gets eliminated by Charbot as she goes for her Kofi spot. She gets her legs on, but Nate, but Sonya Deville, who's still out there, pulls her out, so she is eliminated. You lost last night. You got eliminated tonight. Let it go, Sonya. I am sick and tired of this shit. Are we going to drag this out all the way to fucking WrestleMania? Really? By the way, we'll talk about the Kofi spot in Co- with Kofi's Kofi spot, which was a major fail later on. Let me see here. Number 18 is Ivory, but not just any Ivory, right to censor version of Ivory. She comes out, she's spilling her nonsense, Rhea Ripley picks her up, Rhea Ripley puts her over, taps her on the head, and then eliminates her. She's like, how dare you? Waste of time. 19 is Brie Bella with her horrible Brimo music. I can't stand hearing that. Immediately goes to the yes chance because... The only thing that keeps Brie Bella relevant is the fact that she is married to Brian Danielson, one of the best in the fucking world today. That is the only thing that keeps her relevant. Number 20 is Mickey James. Now, we knew Mickey James was going to be in the Royal Rumble when they when Charbonne announced most of the competitors. Two things came out of this. One, people were like, oh my god, Forbidden Door, Forbidden Door, Forbidden Door. Who's going to be in the men's Rumble for the Forbidden Door? Spoiler alert, nobody. Second, I was hoping, she did come out with the Impact Women's title on, even though it's the Impact Knockouts Championship, they call it the Women's title, whatever. I was wondering, are they going to put her in her, are they going to have her come out to her shitty WWE music, or is she going to come out to Hardcore Country? I love that theme. Sorry, it's fucking fantastic. Good news is, she came out to Hardcore Country. I thought that was fucking awesome. She got the biggest... One of the biggest pops of the night was Mickey James coming out to Hardcore Country and coming out. She lasted, I think, maybe um, 10 to 15 minutes. I don't have to double check on that. So she immediately goes straight to Michelle McCool. And they do bring up the fact that back when Michelle McCool and Mickey James were on SmackDown, they did the whole Piggy James angle. So they did bring that up and have a little beef there. Which, I gotta say, WWE did a lot more long-term storytelling in this match than they have ever than i think i've seen in the last five years bringing up old feuds between mickey james and and um mickey james and michelle mccool somewhere later with i believe um natalia so on and so forth and cool gets eliminated by mickey james which made which they talked about that alicia fox which meh, even even byron saxton Seemed a little disappointed. He's like, well, it is a surprise. Like, he sounded like he was very disappointed the fact that they brought Alicia Fox out here for this match. You know it's a bad it's a bad thing when Alicia Fox. I'm sorry. Alicia Fox. Gonna say it right, no, I'm done. Um, comes out and he's and even Byron Saxon is disappointed in her appearance. 22 is Nikki Trash. She tries to eliminate Rilla Ripley from behind. Doesn't work. Number 23 is Summer Ray, and she is not a legend. I don't care what anyone says. Summer Ray is eliminated by Natalia and Charbonne, and, and Charbonne. And number 24 is Nikki Bella. Alicia Fox is eliminated by Nikki Bella after they do the whole Team Bella because we got to come back to that. And Nikki just forms her and knocks her off. Number 25 is Sarah Logan. I love the music she came out with. It was Viking-esque. She came out looking like she was. Fu- she just came out of a Viking village. Awesome looking shot here. 
Logan and Logan gets eliminated not too long after her and her and Liv Morgan like lock eyes. Liv Morgan gets a little teary eyed because it's one of her best friends in the world here for the Royal Rumble, and she gets eliminated. Then Liv Morgan gets eliminated at the same time, and I'm thinking, hmm, is the Bella Twins and in Sarah Logan a one off? I could totally see at WrestleMania they pull a Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan versus the Bella Twins. You can't call them the Riot Squad because Ruby Riot is an AEW as Ruby Soho. So call them whatever you want, but I think that we could see them do, maybe on Raw, maybe, Nikki and Brie Bella versus Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan. I don't know. Just a thought that came up because of how those eliminations went down, how the Bellas eliminated both of them. Maybe they have beef with the Bellas and maybe that's what we get because... You know, John Laurinaitis wants his daughter-in-laws to be in the Royal Rumble. Number 26 is Lita, who comes in. Her and Mickie James have a little scuff up. Mickie James tries to get back into the ring, but Lita hits a nice DDT to Mickie James, and she falls out of the ring. She is eliminated. Number 27 is Mighty Molly, who just comes to the ring, got her smiles on, and Nikki comes up and just trash, like, just blindsides her. Takes her in the ring and eliminates her in about 20 seconds. Just, yeah. 28 is Ronda Rousey. She's not even, she doesn't even look like she's dressed to compete. She's got black pants on, a black tank top on that says badass, and then a bunch of, uh, some kind of shoulder thing on. I'm thinking she should have been number 30 because it doesn't matter who comes out now, you know who's winning the Royal Rumble. Both Bellas get beat. That like both Nikki's. This was interesting. Nikki Trash, Nikki Bella were on two sides of the ring or two sides of a turnbuckle on the outside. Ronda takes both of them and Guillotine chokes both of them. Eliminates Nikki Trash. Eliminates Nikki Bella. Eventually eliminates Brie Bella. Number twenty nine is Shotzi. Didn't fucking matter again. I don't know why you didn't have the number thirty slot come in for Ronda Rousey and have Ronda come in at number thirty because you know Ronda Rousey's winning this. You're not putting Ronda. In the Royal Rumble if she's not winning. We get eliminated by Rousey. Number 20, 30 is Shayna Baszler. And this is where WWE fucked up at the end. Rousey eliminates Shotzi. Natty is gone by Bianca. Lita eliminated by Charbot. Ripley gets eliminated by the Charbot. Shayna and Belair are both gone. Thanks to Charbot. And we're down to Charbot and Ronda Rousey. So Ronda's in the corner. Sharbot's a little bit out of ways. She charges at Ronda. Ronda picks her up, lifts her over, and she falls out. And she falls out of the ring for the elimination. And Ronda Rousey wins. What the fuck was that? That's how you win the Women's Royal Rumble. You know what you could have done? Have Ronda Rousey be number thirty. Would have been a bigger surprise. Just saying. Then when Shayna eliminates Bianca, Sharbot gets eliminated because the reason they did the finish is because they want to get to. Ronda versus Charbot at WrestleMania. That's apparently what the plan is. So to get to that, you have Ronda eliminate the women's champion. Shayna eliminates Bianca. It comes down to Bianca. It comes down to Shayna and Ronda Rousey. They t- they square up. They're all jovial for a second. They're all, all man, this is great. This is awesome. And then they get serious, and it's like you know, Shayna takes her mouth guard out for a second. They draw from. They they talk. Pleasant cheese for a minute. She puts it back in. They get serious. And they go at it for another five minutes. And then Ronda Rousey eliminates Shayna Baszler. Ronda Rousey wins. And she gets her, and eventually she'll get her match with Charbot 9000. That's what you need to do. Not the way it ended. It was so anticlimactic and so boring. And it killed. And it just made any intrigue when Shayna Baszler and Bianca Belair both got eliminated at the same time. Which Bianca Belair was the Iron Woman. Go figure. But... Yeah, that was the end of the Women's Royal Rumble. Talk about a massive, just meh, end. So yes, Ronda Rousey will be going to WrestleMania to wrestle either Becky or Charlotte. Because yes, Becky was not losing the Raw Women's Championship tonight. Are you out of your mind? Are you out of your mind? No, she was not losing. I did not give a shit about this match and neither did the crowd. The crowd was dead for this match. Nobody cared. I mean, you just had the Women's Royal Rumble where Lita came back, was in the Rumble. You had Mickie James as the Impact Women's Champion with the belt in hand, mind you. 
You had Michelle McCool, the Bella Twins, all these other women who came back that everybody cheered for. They, they, they spent all their energy, and this was the next match, and nobody cared. This match was just meh. Piper gave her the all. Piper Niven tried to win, did everything she could, but unfortunately, Becky wins with a manhandle slam off the top, off the middle rope, for the 1-2-3. Now, the next match was Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar. This was very telling of what was going to happen and who was going to win this match. You're not going to have Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley be the match before the Royal Rumble if some, one of the loser of this match was not going to be in the Rumble. Plain and simple. Now, this was a match that Bobby Lashley has been wanting since 2018, at least. Since he's been back, he said he wanted to come back. And he won, and they and he they promised him a match with Brock Lesnar eventually. Well, you got your match tonight, and this was the match I was looking forward to the most. Unfortunately, this match was paint by numbers. Brock Lesnar. They squared up both each other, su suplexed each other in the beginning. Brock was impressed with the fact that Bobby could put, could suplex him, not just suplex him. Bobby actually tossed him. But when it came down to it, Brock Lesnar hits a bunch of suplexes, a bunch of suplexes, a bunch of suplexes. Bobby Lashley actually had the hurt lock on, but Brock Lesnar was able to get out of it by shoving him into the referee in the corner. Brock Lesnar gets him up in the F5, hits the referee while he's doing it, goes for the pin, no ref around. Roman Reigns shows up, hits the Superman punch, walks over to the ring to where the announce table is on inside. Looks at Paul Heyman, motions for the WWE Championship. Paul Heyman, who has the WWE title, hesitates for a second, but then hands, well, hands Roman Reigns the WWE title. Roman, holding the title, waits for Lesnar to get up and just smacks Lesnar over the head. Throws the title down. He leaves. Paul Heyman leaves with his hands over his head, like uh, above it, uh, up, like I have nothing to do with any of this. I am just gonna leave. And Paul Heyman and, Bro and Roman Reigns leave. Bobby Lashley takes the pin. Referee comes in. One, two, three. We have a new WWE champion, and Bobby Lashley. I'm gonna be honest. This should have never been a match for the WWE title, where Bobby Lashley was losing, was was not the champion. Bobby Lashley should have never lost the WWE title when he lost the WWE title. He should have held it all the way from the time he won it last year to WrestleMania this year, have the championship for well over a year, take it into WrestleMania against Big E because the winner of the Royal Rumble was going to challenge Roman Reigns, have Big E cash in his money in the bank and say, I'm going to beat you at WrestleMania, have the match, and have Big E have his big moment at WrestleMania. But they blew their load and gave Big E the WWE Championship at the wrong fucking time. And now all the rights were, all the wrongs were written right. And Bobby Lashley is the WWE Champion as he should be. What happens to Brock Lesnar? More on that later. The match was disappointing. I really was looking forward to this match. Because Brock Lesnar is on, a, is on a whole new level, being this whole baby face of him. Everybody loves it. When Paul Heyman did his introduction, I haven't heard the crowd because they were at this... By the way, anybody who thinks that WWE got 44,000 people into that building, you're out of your mind. WrestleTix, the, the Twitter account WrestleTix exists, and they put it at 39,000. WWE just continue to lie. Why are they always lying about the about the attendance when we have a Twitter account, a verified Twitter account called WrestleTix that tracks this shit every single time? Oh, but it's it's got to be the people who get the tickets and all the and like the workers who work in the um, concourse and everything. Those count too. No. The only people who should count are the people who paid to come see the event. Now, thirty-nine thousand is not that bad. It is the biggest event. It's the biggest audience WWE has had since the pandemic started in two thousand twenty. So good on them. So we get the Miz and Maurice versus Beth and Edge. I really don't care about this match. Beth got the power bomb. The Miz. Maurice got to hit a hurricane run in a, on, on Edge, and 
The Grit Couple hit a, hit double glam slams for the pin and the win. I did not give a shit about this match. Not at all. So we get our 30-man Royal Rumble match. Number one is AJ Styles, who could have been the Iron Man, but we'll talk about that here in a minute. Number two is Shinsuke Nakamura, so we get a rematch. We get a re- a re-glimpse into WrestleMania in 2018. Which fun fact about AJ Styles? This is his sixth Royal Rumble event. This is his, I think, fourth or third Royal Rumble match. They said third or fourth, yeah, third Royal Rumble, Royal Rumble match. But the first four Royal Rumble events AJ Styles participated in, which is 2016, 17, 18, and 19 were all for the WWE Championship. The the Royal Rumble match in 2016 was for the WWE title. Of course, Triple H won that one, which was fucking dumb. He was the champion in 2017 when he lost to John Cena. 2018, he defended against Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens and won. And in 2019, he failed to capture the WWE title for a third time against evil Daniel Bryan. So, I think... I honestly think I'd have to go back and look at all the Rumbles title matches... I think that AJ Styles is the first guy to ever wrestle four consecutive w- Royal Rumble match, Royal Rumble pay-per-views for the WWE title. Just wanted to throw that out there. But these guys are in there for a minute, and then we have Austin Theory at number three. Uh, I'm sorry, Robert Roode at number four. He gets eliminated like really quick. Number five is Rich Holland with his own theme music. He did not come out to Sheamus' music. Where has this music been, may I ask? Number six is Montez Ford. Seven is Damian Priest, which we didn't get any tease towards Damian tonight, outside of his testimonial about the Royal Rumble match on the pre-show. Number eight is Sami Zayn, and who would be number nine? Gee, I don't know. Um, some jackass named Johnny Knoxville came out looking like a fucking buffoon. He comes out. He takes um moves from everybody. Montez Ford hits him with a um. Rock Splash, Damian Priest puts him on the outside of the apron, Sami Zayn kicks him, Haluba kicks him out of the ring, and then Sami Zayn gets eliminated. What a waste of fucking time. Number 11 is Omos, Dawkins eliminated by Omos, Ford also eliminated, and AJ Styles is damn near killed by that. Ricochet is number 12, 13 is Chad Gable, after everyone's trying to get rid of Omos, Chad comes in and is like, dude, guys, guys, you're doing this wrong, I got a plan, guys, everyone get up. He's like, Damon, you're the biggest guy in this match. Go after him. So Priest goes after him. Priest gets sacrificed. And then everybody starts getting Omos out of the ring. Number 14 is Dominic Mysterio. And he gets in there. The, he helps leverage it in. AJ Styles with a jumping forearm to get Omos eliminated. Omos is out. So his bid to go to WrestleMania for the WWE title is out. He could still win the Elimination Chamber, which would be a travesty. Just saying. Number 15 is Happy Corbin. Corbin eliminates Ricochet right away. Dolph Ziggler is number 16. Dom is eliminated after a deep, deep six by Baron Corbin. Number 17 is Sheamus. Holland gets eliminated while he's coming into the ring. Number 18 is Rick Boogs, who comes out to his own music. Which, I couldn't tell what the hell it sounded like. Uh, Gable gets eliminated... Gets eliminated, and Kevin Dunn misses it because, for whatever reason, they were pointing to whatever Corbin and them were doing. But Kat, Chad Gable gets eliminated. Number 19, Mad Cat Moss. Number 20 is Matt Riddle. Mad Cat Moss eliminated Styles almost like... Uh, eliminated AJ Styles, who was in there for almost 30 minutes. Number 21 is the first surprise of the night, and that is Drew McIntyre. We have not seen Drew McIntyre since day one. There was a possibility that Drew McIntyre might have had, had might need neck surgery. Thankfully, that was not the case. Back to Moss and Baron Corbin both get eliminated by Drew McIntyre. Drew chooses violence as he goes out on the bottom rope and just beats the shit out of both of these guys, hitting them both with tape with the um, steps and a bunch of other things. Number twenty-three is Rey Mysterio. Number twenty-four, Kofi Kingston, and here's where it got stupid. So the plan was Kevin Owens was to take Kofi Kingston as Kofi Kingston was on top of the turnbuckle and toss him to where he would catch on the barricade and not um, not have his feet touch the floor. They didn't get enough height as Kofi Kingston's feet both touched the floor. 
So basically, what probably would have happened was Kofi Kingston would have got up, got on the steps, and got knocked back out and got eliminated anyway. This spot was unnecessary because in two spots, two st- two spots later in the Royal Rumble, Big E was out. You could have had Kofi Kingston in the match, and at number twenty-five was Otis. Number twenty-six was Big E. You could have had Bo- um, Big E rushing to the ring. Kofi Kingston gets knocked out if you time it right. Kofi gets caught by Big E and put back into the ring as Big E was making his entrance. But 26 was Big E. 27 was Bad Bunny. Now, out of the two celebrities, and I don't give Johnny Knoxville. Johnny Knoxville is a celebrity in his own fucking mind. I don't care what anyone says. He's not a celebrity. But out of the two people who would not fund the WWE, I'm okay with Bad Bunny because he did have a damn good match at WrestleMania. He even hit a Canadian Destroyer tonight on... Who the fuck was that? Dolph Ziggler, I believe? Sheamus gets eliminated by Bad Bunny. Ziggler eliminated by Bun- Bunny and Mysterio. Number 29 is Shane O'Mac, while Ray gets eliminated by Otis. Shane eliminates Owens. Number 29 is Randy Orton, and RK Bro eliminates Big E. I'm sorry. Yeah, Big E and Otis both get eliminated by the RK Bros. Um, I don't know who he bounced off of, but Matt Riddle with a sick RKO off of somebody onto Drew McIntyre. Number 30 is Brock Lesnar. Who didn't see that coming? Bad Bunny is in the final six with Shane McMahon, Brock Lesnar, like Shane McMahon, Brock Lesnar, Bad Bunny, RK Bro, and Drew McIntyre. That was your final six. Bad Bunny made it to the final five as Randy Orton gets eliminated. Matt Riddle gets eliminated. Bad Bunny gets eliminated with an F5. He actually takes an F5. I give the man props. Shane goes down. It's down to Drew and Brock. They fight for a bit. I'm McIntyre tries, like, Brock Lesnar tries to get a Claymore. I mean, a, an F5. Drew gets out of that, scratches him up, goes for a Claymore, and he dodges that. Drew McIntyre gets put into an F5. F5 out of the ring. And Brock Lesnar wins the 30-man Royal Rumble. And we'll be going to WrestleMania to challenge Roman Reigns to get revenge on Roman and Paul Heyman screwing him out of the WWE Championship. This show fucking sucked. It was it's it, it's it was predictable that it was going to be Ronda Rousey. It's been known for days that it's going to be Ronda Rousey. Now apparently it's supposed to be Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte. No, thank you. I do not care. We saw enough of them tonight. I'd rather have the one-on-one match between Ronda Rousey and Becky Lynch, even though people would probably get tired of that too. Brock Lesnar, as soon as he came out, you knew you knew as soon as he lost the title. If it wasn't if Brock Lesnar wasn't going to be in the rest in in the Royal Rumble, they would have been they, they would have switched the two matches, and that would have been the main event match before the Royal Rumble. But that's not what happened. They want to give Brock Lesnar time to, you know. Breathe because he's coming in at number 30, but he still needs to rest a little bit. So the show sucked. Roman and Roman, it was like Roman and Seth was good. Then that finish happened, and then the show decided to suffer after that. Nobody gave a shit about Becky versus Piper Niven. The women's Royal Rumble was a convoluted, terrible mess with a bunch of has beens who had no business being in the ring. And a couple of legends. Mickey James was a cool thing with the um, having hardcore country and the fact that she came out with the Knockout Women's Championship. Will this do anything for Impact Wrestling? No. Is the Forbidden Door open for WWE? No. WWE was desperate for bodies. They had most like I don't know. I think they had what what fifteen women in the Royal Rumble from outside of WWE. They didn't have enough women to do a Royal Rumble match. So, yeah, that that kind of just it, it is what it is. That's what they decided to do. So, hopefully, like Lita might be doing around. Maybe she's gonna go have a match with somebody. Like I said, it feels like the way they had the Bella Twins eliminate both Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan that this is not a one off. It just feels like if you're gonna if like there's no other reason to eliminate both of them like that and have the Bellas do it. It would make sense for them because you have Liv Morgan, you have Sarah Logan, the Viking, which Sarah Logan looked fantastic as a Viking. I wish, I hope she did resign, I hope they did sign her back. They need women. They need women who can do something. 
And Liv Morgan and her can go around and maybe challenge for the tag team titles, maybe win the women's tag team titles, do something her and Ruby couldn't do. Just, the show just meh. I didn't give a shit about Miz and Maurice versus the um, Beth and Edge. Nothing really big there. The men's Rumble match was meh. Just one of the worst Rumble shows I think I've seen in a while. But we are on the road to WrestleMania. Monday Night Raw and SmackDown now. We'll have the WrestleMania logo from between now and WrestleMania up in the rafters. It's time to see what WWE does. What matches we will see at WrestleMania. Will we see AJ Styles versus Edge? I would like to see that. You're going to give me AJ Styles versus Edge? That's fine by me. Who's going to challenge Bobby Lashley for the WWE Championship? What's going to happen between Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins? Because that is not done whatsoever. And so much more. But I'm going to get out of here, you guys. Um, let me know in the comments section below what you thought about the Royal Rumble. I would give it a C, a D minus. I would give it a D minus. If I had to. Or one and a half stars with Roman and Seth being that one and a half. That one and everything else being a half. But hit that subscribe button, comment down below, like or dislike this video. Find me on Minds at the Franz Club. Find me on twitch.tv slash the Franz Club. And find me on Instagram at the Franz Club. And I will see you guys on Monday for Raw. Until then, my name is the Franz, and I'll see you guys later.